want to make a video here to address a question I've been getting a lot lately, and I even got it in the comment sections on my video just a few minutes ago. And that is dealing with the state's right to ignore federal laws that are counter to their own laws or their own constitution. Specifically, do they have the right to ignore federal gun laws? Now, a lot of people are using the example of a lot of states are passing marijuana laws now that are contrary to the national laws. Uh, so they are saying, that, well, that's going in the face of the national law. Uh, and do I agree with that? And I do agree with that. So would I therefore also agree that states have the right to uh, disregard bans on guns imposed on a federal level? The answer to that question is yes, I do believe states should have the right to ignore gun restrictions or gun laws that violate their own state constitutions or their state laws. And I'll tell you why. The Second Amendment is, I will admit, a little bit vague. Uh, it is pretty all-inclusive. It, it, it would be rare that anyone would write legal writings that are that inclusive, that, all, that uh, you know, wide-reaching without giving definition to them or without giving structure to them. But the way it's written is the way it's written. And I do not think on the federal level they have a, a right to reinterpret the way it's written. Now, the states can take that how they want. Uh, if California wants to say, well, we take it to mean only in a militia, well, then that's the state of California's right to do. Uh, but if the state of New York or the state of Tennessee or West Virginia or Oregon or Washington wants to say it's at everybody's individual right, I don't think the, the, the federal government has the right to step in and supersede state law or state constitution. A lot of state constitutions have a clearer definition of the Second Amendment in their state constitutions. With that being said, and saying that it is the state's right to write their own constitution and their own laws in the way they see fit, uh, and interpret the constitution in the way they see fit to interpret it, that doesn't mean that the federal government shouldn't be able to step in and say, okay, you have gone too far with your interpretation of the segment, and now you are infringing upon the rights of people to bear arms when it says they shall not be infringed upon. Uh, if that's the way you want to interpret Second Amendment, it's kind of the way I do. Uh, but it's still, that's not very likely to happen. The federal government isn't likely to step in and the, on the pro side of firearms uh, rights. So it would actually be behooven upon the people of every state to make sure on a state level that your constitution and your state laws abide by the constitution of the United States, which is, like I say, very wide reaching. So it's, it'd be hard to put restrictions on somebody outside of a state level. But like I say, I do agree on a state's rights to restrict certain rights inside their states as long as it doesn't restrict on the rights of individual groups of people. So if they're passing that law against everybody, well, then I can't argue with it as much as I would if they just restricted it to certain groups. But like I say, it is upon the shoulders of every citizen of every state to make sure their state does the right thing as far as firearms rights are concerned. Now, I do acknowledge that the federal government does have the right to sometimes step in when states overstep their bounds, uh, like when they start denying rights to certain groups of people, but not when they're including rights to people. When they are just making statements of inclusion and, uh, and acknowledging that everybody has these specific rights, that's not a bad thing. When it's when they start saying, well, only people that pay their property taxes could own a gun. Well, then that would be a, that would be a reason for the federal government to step in. Not if they said, okay, everyone can own a gun. If they, even if they said, uh, you know, Everyone that owned a gun, even if they had a felony record, as long as they have that record expunged or they've gone three years with no offenses, that should be their right to do it. Uh, it should not be up to the federal government to step in in those cases. Now, a lot of people will use the slippery slope argument that if you start allowing states to say, okay, everyone can do this, or people can have this right, uh, that they can somehow backdoor in restrictions by saying, okay, well, every single person that owns a business has a right to not hire black people. Well, that's still not an inclusion of right. That is an exclusion of right. That is saying black people don't have the same rights and same businesses as other people. So that would not fly. That would be a case of intervention uh, because the federal government does have the responsibility through the Constitution to protect the Union from threats both foreign and domestic. Uh, and a rogue state would be a domestic threat. And I, I think we could all agree that tomorrow if Tennessee and Mississippi and, and Arkansas banded together and said, we're abolishing minority rights and we're starting slavery again, well, that would be a threat to our union. So that, there would be justification in stepping in. But them saying everybody that lives in our state can, can open carry a handgun if they want to, that's not a threat to the union. That does not have any effects outside the borders of their state, and therefore the federal government has, should have no say in it, no matter how many laws they pass. So in the end, I 
think they should be able to ignore the laws that the federal government passes regarding firearms because most states have their own laws, they have their own constitution, and they're not violating the federal constitution. Now, if they step beyond violating the federal constitution, then, of course, they'd have a right, the federal government have a right to step in. But that, like I said, would be in a case of denying rights, not acknowledging rights. Whenever someone, like I said, is including everyone in a right or acknowledging that a right exists, I very seldom see a problem with it. It's when you start denying rights to certain people that the feds should step in. rights belong to everybody. Now, if a state passed a law that says only certain people could own guns, well, yeah, then, then I would think, 